Patriots fans, your New England Patriots host the Cincinnati Bengals on Christmas Eve at Gillette Stadium. What is it going to take to get a victory? We got the monster keys today for you, so stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you Foxborough faithful. Happy Friday. Happy Festivus, everyone. It is the Friday episode of Locked On Patriots podcast brought to you by the podcast, Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Remember, Locked On Patriots is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So smash that subscribe button, download, subscribe to follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcast. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for our listeners here on Locked On Patriots. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Pats fans, greetings, salutations, and thank you for joining us here on this Friday episode of the pod. Closing out the week in style, bringing you up to Saturday's kickoff at 1 p.m. from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. The New England Patriots hosting the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. Reach out to me. Let me know what's on your mind. Wish me a happy holidays, and I'll do the same in return. Do so on the Bird app at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some love to the Twitterverse, please be sure to follow the Locked On Patriots account as well at L-O underscore Patriots. That's fans. It is a monster need for the Patriots to get a win on Saturday. And because it's a monster need, we need the monster keys to get there. Who else? To bring us into the weekend in style is my good friend, the Count of Murphy Fisto himself, columnist extraordinaire from E2GSports.com, the legendary Thomas Murphy. Murph, the Patriots, they're in must-win territory now, aren't they, my friend? I got a lot of problems with you people, so we're going to start with the airing of the grievances. <laughs> airing of grievances, yes. Did you see Paul Murph? <laughs> It requires no decoration. I I find Tinsel distracting. So does Frank Costanza, by the way. (laughs) Stop. We got to stop or we'll be here for two hours. And that is true. Yes. I don't know why, but they frown on it. Um, Yeah. The, one of the all time great Seinfeld episodes, we, we, we've all adopted Festivus and um, stop by my Twitter page later for any airing of your grievances and, or, or Mike's for the, the feats of strength, you know, (laughs) Absolutely. Until you pin me, Murph, Festivus is not over. (laughs) No, Festivus is not over until we get somebody pinned here. Um, Yeah, we're just starting out. uh, Joe Cardona is going to end up missing the rest of this season, huh? It's uh, the... A foot injury is is not something to be taken lightly when you are a long snapper, especially one that has gotten the amount of work that Joe Cardona has this year, which has been far too much, people. Um, I, I'm really not sure how to take this. Um, I, I believe that if the Patriots felt like they were going to make a, a long run in the playoffs, this might be something that Joe powers through. Just knowing Joe Cardona, um, not knowing anything you know, about the injury per se. I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. We leave all that to <laughs> Jess Didi. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, but you know, it, it, it could be something serious and, and why risk needing, uh, more extensive surgery if surgery is in, involved down the, down the road, or, uh, if he can just rest up and hopefully let this heal on its own. But I, I really do knowing Joe Cardona, he's somebody that has played through injury, um, on more than one occasion, for the Patriots are just going to send Joe some good karma. 
Absolutely. We send them good karma as well, folks. Yeah, by the way, on Thursday evening, when the Patriots released their final injury and practice participation report, we found out, obviously, Jalen Mills not going to be in the lineup. Not many people are surprised by that. Didn't practice all week. He's still out with the groin injury. We'll get into what that means for the defense in just a moment. Devontae Parker will not suit up. He remains in concussion protocol. Uh, But Joe Cardona being on the list is definitely an eye scratch. It's an eye scratcher. It's definitely an eye popper and a head scratcher. This is a guy that played in 127 out of 127 possible games. So this will be his first miss along with the remaining two games on the schedule after Saturday. Uh, Mike Reese of ESPN reporting that this is a tear in his foot. Um, He is fully expected to be ready for OTA, all the off-season workout programs, so Joe will be back on the field, but right now, Tucker Addington, that the Patriots added just last week to the practice squad, looks like he is going to be the long snapper for the stretch run here, and this is significant, Murph, and this is no disrespect to Tucker, who, you know, may be able to do his job very effectively and very well, but... Long snapping has such a ripple effect on so much of what the Patriots do, not just really does. in the punting game. It affects the kicking game. It affects special teams coverage units, the, you know, the, the, um, the schemes that you want to deploy. Uh, this is something to keep an eye on, folks. And now that the Patriots are getting into weather territory, meaning right. that you know they have to worry about playing through the cold, through the wind, and they've got their last game in Buffalo. Uh, no more right. games in uh, tropical or uh, you know amenable conditions yeah. uh, to uh, uh, to that. Yeah, the um, NFL doesn't move the Patriots to domes when, when <laughs> you know that doesn't happen. No, no, absolutely not. No, you play through the elements up here, right. and that's the way it is. And that's exactly uh, what. New England is going to have to do so worth keeping an eye on folks. Uh, but Murph is absolutely right. We give a tip of the cap and a nod and a best wishes to Joe Cardona, who is as tough yeah. as they come. And I assure you, if, if it's a situation where it's keeping him off the field, he's, uh, he's, he's more than likely, you know, really, really in a, right. a tough situation. So you hope for the best Murph, uh, but expect the worst. And right. if we're airing grievances right now, Uh, The New England Patriots are about to face a Cincinnati Bengals team that is well-versed in being able to take apart what you do well. Uh, Let's start on the defensive side of the ball because Joe Burrow obviously is, you know, top echelon when it comes to the quarterbacks out there in the league. Ice water running through the veins. You're not going to rattle this kid. Um, But there are ways to be able to get to him a little bit. If we're talking defensive monster keys right now, Obviously, it begins trying to keep Burrow contained by trying to contain that three-headed trio that is really, really difficult. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd out of the slot. When you're about to turn these monster keys defensively, Murph, what do the Patriots have to do here? Attack, attack, and attack again. Um, You need to get Joe Burrow. Uh, Like you said, you're not going to upset him. You're not going to – he's not going to be seeing ghosts. Uh, he's not going to be ducking when there's nobody there. You have to be there. The the, the Patriots uh, front seven has to get home this week. Make him uncomfortable. Make him get rid of the ball quicker than, than he has to. Make them go to a short game where they're depending on getting yards after the catch. Don't allow him to sit back there, uh, survey the field, and pick apart uh, this the Patriots secondary. Yeah, absolutely. You're 100% right. And this is not a team, Murph, that you want to go ahead and start deploying a whole lot of man coverage. Uh, One thing about Jalen Mills' injury and the potential injuries to Jonathan Jones, who has a chest injury, Jack Jones still, uh, you know, uh, going after the knee at this point, or I should say still recovering from the knee injury. They're both questionable for this game. Mills is out. So that may force the New England Patriots just by default not to go very man heavy right now. Yeah, exactly. I see you it, holding it, up the fingers yeah. and you're absolutely right. It's a cover two kind of day. Yeah, it is. Um, you don't want to slip into cover three against uh, this man. He will pick it apart. He will eat it apart. He is one of the best in the business. When you go man, go man coverage with the, the weapons that he has, he is going to, uh, he's going to make you pay. All right. Mm-hmm. This is a cover two afternoon for the Patriots. 
Absolutely. And when you look at now what they will need to do in order to try to keep that trio in check, yep. Miles Bryan is going to be press gagged, whether you want to or whether you right. don't, into covering Tyler Boyd. And for all of the vitriol that Miles gets, I think he's been solid right. this year in coverage. There have been some glaring problems. And unfortunately, they've come at inopportune times where it's very visible. But this kid is capable of doing yeah. what he needs to do in the slot to keep uh, Boyd in check. My biggest worry right now is trying to contain T Higgins because he's right. our number two option. I think that to me is going to be a very big matchup to watch. And that's why it's so important. And I hope he's able to do it for Patriots fans sake, having Jonathan Jones in this game, because right. what they will try to do is I think a little bit of what we saw last week with John Jones and maybe Marcus Jones doing that cloud coverage that they had against Devonte Adams that worked very well in the initial, uh, you know, goings of last week's game. You got the one double schemes. That to me is something where the Patriots could have some success. So if that's the case and you end up having to keep Higgins and Boyd in check, that may end up, uh, uh, you know, giving, uh, uh, yep. you know, cadence also, to someone covering Chase full time. Yeah, I Matthew Judon did a fantastic job last week dropping into coverage and taking away um, what the Raiders wanted to do underneath. He really helped out in that area. And everybody was asking, why isn't, wh where's the sacks? Where the, the sacks are coming from somewhere else. He's showing blitz and then he's backing off into coverage. And it worked really well okay. in shutting down a very good passing game on uh, last Sunday, up right up until the the time that they just started started playing prevent defense with three minutes left in the game. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, well, that's no question. of the grievances. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it is grievance time. And um, yeah, if the Patriots are trying to allow Joe Burrow the opportunity to one day removed air his grievances, yep. it might be holding on to the football a little bit too long. And that's why it is vital that guys right. like Matthew Judon, Josh Uche continue that pressure keep it you know amped up because right. that is the that is the only way that you're going to be able to get to him like you said if he has time to pick his targets he'll pick you apart every single time you know, he's that good pressure up the middle pressure off the right side uh people are going to be um a little uh hesitant when i say this but attack karis mm, do it exactly. attack karis all right mm. he, he's a fantastic ball player but he 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 doesn't handle that kind of pressure, the kind of pressure that Barmore could bring this week. Yeah, without question. And then you're also looking on the other side as uh, as well with the uh, tackle position. Mm -hmm. That's where Cincy is a little bit right. suspect. That's where you can get to them. They've really shored up the interior, but yep. at the tackle but position, they can't Leal be had Collins, well. Leal Collins is somebody that you can take advantage of. And yeah. and I, I fully expect Uche to come off that edge and, and really make him work this week. Yeah, Stay away from the left side, work the right side in the middle. Very well said. Very well said. But Murph, we know that monster keys being turned on the defensive side of the ball is not the only thing that's going to lead to victory. The New England Patriots need to turn some offensive keys. If you think we aired some grievances just a moment ago, folks, we are going to continue to go full on grievance when we talk about the offense and what the Patriots need to do. There is a way to score against this team. I got a funny feeling Murph is going to be able to turn that monster key that could lead the Patriots to victory. We'll discuss that and more in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. But Murph, it's travel time here on the East Coast, West Coast, all points in between. The holidays are nearly on us. They will be here on Saturday. And, you know, they're getting up to the game. If you're a New England Patriots fan, you want to make sure that you can get around and get from point A to point B when you need to. That's why you need to try Turo, the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and Australia. You can book that spacious SUV or a minivan for a family road trip, a holiday road trip, or you can find an affordable economy car if you're on a budget and just need to get from point A to point B. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms and conditions and exclusions apply. Find your drive at Turo.com. Patriots fans, did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? Yeah, 
That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high can get you a DUI. And if you think the law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell, your coworkers can tell, even your parents can tell, everyone can tell. So what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So even if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. And driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI. Paid for by the NHTSA. Patriots fans, the legendary Thomas Murphy joins me here today on Festivus Friday, bringing you all you need to know, previewing the Patriots week 16 matchup with the Cincinnati Bengals, 1 p.m. kickoff at Gillette Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts. Murph, in the previous segment, we talked about monster defensive keys, but there's a lot of Festivus airing of grievances when it comes to the Patriots offense. Just look on Twitter, folks. It is a lot of fun. Um, it's definitely, it is not dull. I guarantee nope. you that. And the one thing you cannot say is that it's boring. Uh, there is a ton out there that people are looking at. But Mer, there is a way to be able to take it to an improved and stout Bengals defense that yep. can make things happen at all yep. three levels. So when you look at this game from a monster key perspective. What do the Patriots need to do in order to move the ball and put points on the board against the Cincinnati defense? Spread it out and sling it. All right. I want to see Yak all day long. Okay. Allow Mac to get under center, survey the field, find the open man after snap and then use Yak to, to move the chains. This is a week that the Patriots are going to need to uh, set up the run with the pass, okay? Um, I'm not saying go five wide on every single play. I'm not saying uh, go no huddle uh, on every single play, but they're going to have to use tempo, motion, and bunches to get these guys open, get them in the right spot, allow, you, allow um, the offensive line – did a, a much better job last week of protecting Mac. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to say that Mac made it, It's one of the reasons Mac had a terrible game, probably one of the worst games that he's ever had because he had the protection and he was still missing open guys, but those guys were open. All right. And, and as long as that continues, Mac's not going to have another game like he did last week, mm -hmm. allow these guys to move the chains for you. And then even Ramondre is, is, uh, is questionable for Saturday, uh, from what I've heard. Yes, he and, is. And um, <clears throat> once again, you saw what he was able to do in the second half. I think he got uh, you. You know, you're allowed one shot, one shot of Jack Daniels, either before the game or at halftime. I think he took a <laughs> shot of Jack Daniels at halftime, and we all saw what he did. Mm -hmm. um, so if he's active, he he'll have another good game, but not like he did against the Raiders. They, this this. Uh, this Bungles um, defense is not the Bungles of, of old. They're uh, run-stuffing monsters in the mm. middle, and they're going to have to the, – the, the, the run game, they're going to have to get to the outside. The other thing I want them to I, – I don't want to see a single pass go horizontally, okay? Mm. Let's get – I don't mean vertically down the field. I'm not talking 20, 25 yards down the field. But can we get to the line of scrimmage before somebody catches a pass? Okay. <laughs> and these kids also have to learn right. when not to when not to grab grab mm. the ball. Just knock it down. Okay. You don't you don't have to worry about max stats. All right. There are other people that do that. Knock the ball down, get back to the line of scrimmage. You're five yards behind the play and you're staring at, at four defenders in front of you. You're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just knock the ball down, rehuddle, and get back to it. You can't play this week from behind the chains. Yeah, run stuffing is definitely uh, where this defense comes right. alive. They're a top 10 defense when it comes to stuffing the run. So mm -hmm. going to be difficult for guys like Ramondre Stevenson or 
the, the rookies, Pierre Strong, Kevin Harris. Right. If Damian Harris is back for this game, he's questionable for this game. Yeah. There's a shot that he plays. And if that happens, these guys are not going to be able to run the ball north no. and south. So what they're going to have to do is get inventive and catch the ball out of the backfield. That's where right. Stevenson and I think Pierre Strong come Pierre in. Pierre Strong very, very, come in. You know, oh, God. Very, yeah. yeah, they're going to factor big into this game. But I'm glad that you mentioned the deep ball because – if you're sick and tired of the Patriots' quick game, folks, this may not be the game that you want to watch. Right. It might ruin your no. Christmas Eve dinner. Right. Since his defense is fifth in DVOA against the deep right. pass, the Patriots are not going to air this out and throw the ball down the field unless they That's feel it. that it's a sure fire connection. And against this uh, secondary, that may be difficult. Um, you know, Cam Taylor, Britt, Eli Apple, these guys can cover downfield. So that's going to be very paramount for the Patriots to move the ball. Uh, they're 17 versus, um, you know, versus uh, short passes and they right. allow 8.6 yards per play action pass attempt. That's 27th in the NFL. Want to get there a tip of the cap to my good friend, Evan Lazar of Patriots.com for that little tidbit folks, but they are taking a Plus page or team. they should. Yeah. And they should take a page out of what Tom Brady did to this team last yep. week. Brady found openings, slap flants, snag concepts that put the short zone defenders in conflict and it out leveraged some of the coverage with the slat panners. And that's something that, uh, you know, Evan talked about with uh, me, right. you know, privately is, and, uh, and I appreciate that insight because he's absolutely right. If the, if the new England Patriots are going to dust off the play action, this is the week to do it. There Tom it went 10 of 14 for 145 passing yards off of play action last week. That is where this defense can be had. And, you know, credit to uh, uh, you Claire. know Jake and uh, credit yep. to Jake and James yesterday here on the Locked On crossover Thursday with Locked On Bengals. This is not a team that turns the ball over, but no. they like to force turnovers. Right. So if that's the case, the Patriots are going to have to play short, compact, safe that's football. It. If they can do that, use the short zone, exploit the short zone defenders, and move the ball through play action, Patriots have a puncher's chance in this one. They do. They they really do. Um, this is a team that that can be had. That any team can be had. Um, for the the mystique of playing in New England is not what it was three or four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. But still, you have to take care of business at home. You put yourself in this position. I've I've said time and time again to get Hunter Henry up the seam. And this is a week that you're going to be able to do that through play action. Yeah, absolutely. And Henry is probably your best seam receiver uh, in terms right. of being able to get there. This guy runs the route as well as anyone. And I've seen him do it since his days, uh, you know, with Los Angeles, with the Chargers. Yep. Um, this is a week to get him involved and take a look for John in the red zone as well. Right. Uh, he's going to look to exploit some of the uh, deficiencies in the short game there on the goal line. So he 55%, might get some percent well. 55% mm -hmm. of, of, of opponents against this team. Once you get into the red zone, score touchdowns, you've got to score sixes this week. You cannot Absolutely. settle. You cannot yep. settle for threes. Right. Um, <clears throat> this team, as you said, they like to create turnovers. The reason they got back into that game last week against Tom Brady is because he had one of his worst passing days in the second half ever. He had four turnovers in that game. And um, you, the Patriots are going to have to at least come out even mm. on uh, Saturday night in the turnover battle. You've yeah. got to at least come out even. Absolutely. Because, again, this is not a team, the Cincinnati Bengals, that creates a whole lot of turnover. And New England gets a lot of their points off of turnover. 91, right. one of the top teams in the league at doing it. Um, they're not going to be able to rely on that this week. No. So they're going to have to manufacture points. Um, or if you're a baseball guy, you know that term, manufacture a run. That's it. That's what the Patriots are going to have to do this week. That's and if it. they do it, if they do it, they feet do at a time. 90 feet Absolutely. at a time. And that's, right. that's you know, it, you can do it. You, th yep. This team can do it. They do have the the personnel to do it. And at some times um, with this uh, wide receiver core, less has been more. Mm -hmm. Okay. When guys have been banged up, there have been usually when Myers is banged up and I, I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to disparage Jacoby Myers here. People, I love him. This has nothing to do with the play at the end of, of the, it, it just seems to me that Mac sees the field much better when he's not focusing in on Jacoby Myers, Jacoby mm -hmm. Myers has become his binky right. and in the, in the way, and he's not the type of player that, Rob Gronkowski is as a pinky. <laughs> mm, it's true. <laughs> it's just and, not. 
Yeah, and when you fall in love with a target, you start telegraphing. It makes it very easy for opposing secondaries it really to, be able does. to pick up on it and to uh, uh, to get on that right away. You know, I mean, Murph, we we love mob movies. You know, you think of uh, analyze this. You know, yep. the animals they're very cunning and they sense weakness and they'll they go after weakness the weakness. And they will know? go after the weakness, and that's it. And that's exactly what they will do. So. Um, Obviously, a lot of monster keys to be turned, right. Murph, but I think we've given our listeners enough to bite on where if they start doing these things, meaning the New England Patriots, yep. on Saturday, they may have a chance to be able to yep. uh, you know, contend and maybe hang with the Cincinnati Bengals and maybe pull the upset off. But right. bottom line, Murph, we're almost at the time where we're going to give our final thoughts on this Christmas Eve matchup between the Pats and the Bengals. From Gillette Stadium in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast concludes. But first, folks, today's episode is also brought to you by our good friends at BetOnline.net, your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, analysis, you name it, they got it. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball, they've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you'll even find those on Bet Online as well. They're the fastest, easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. Patriots fans, the legendary Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports joins me here today, bringing you into the weekend here on Festivus Friday and previewing the Patriots Christmas Eve matchup with the Cincinnati Bengals at 1 p.m. at Gillette Stadium. Murph, we've arrived at that time. We've talked offense. We've talked defense. We've even talked a little long snapping. Um, and... All of the factors that really kind of determine what this game could either look like or what this game will look like uh, really are determined, I think, by your monster keys from E2G Sports. Folks, read these keys. I'm telling you, you turn the keys, you go to the top. You don't turn the keys, you're never heard from again. So when I ask, in your infinite wisdom, my friend, any more parting thoughts, any more tidbits that you think our listeners should know heading into Saturday's matchup? and if you want, give him a little Christmas gift, Murph. What uh, what can we expect? Uh, let us know your prognostication for this okay. game coming up. Well, I mean, Devontae Parker's out. I'm looking for Tyquan Thornton to have a, a huge game along with Hunter Henry. These are two guys that um, that can really exploit the the soft underbelly of the Cincinnati game. Once again, use use that that run game to to set up uh, that passing game to set up the run. You know, and the Patriots are going to have to tear a book, uh, a page out of an old book this week and beg this uh, Cincinnati team to run the ball. Um, keep the scoring down. I'm expecting the Patriots to be able to put up, you know, um, between 17 and 21 points. I'm going to I'm going to take the Patriots in a, a squeaker 21 to 17 in this game. The defense is going to have to carry the water again. Yeah. From your lips to God's ears, my friend, I think that's exactly what are the football God's ears, I should say. Uh, for all of our listeners, I know everyone is hoping that. Um, I'll be very honest. I'm not as optimistic about you. But the more I look into this game and the more I see about what the Patriots can do and in you know talking to people that I've spoken with this week and hearing what the players and the coaches had to say, um, I will say, folks, this is a winnable game for the New England yeah. Patriots. They're not facing an insurmountable opponent. They're not facing uh, the irresistible force of the immovable object. They can get to this team if they choose to. Mm -hmm. the, the key, again, is making sure that they do not beat themselves. And that right. really has been an Achilles heel of the New England Patriots. Three um, wins. Three yeah. wins. Absolutely. And, you know, bottom line, if they're relying on the defense to win it again, I, I think that puts them in a precarious situation. I fully I agree understand. with what Murph said. And I do believe that if they're going to, that's exactly what has to happen. So I think you're 100 percent right, my friend. I think I'm just lacking a little bit of the optimism that you have that it's actually going to get done yeah. because I think Burrow has looked at this lineup. I think he's looked at the way this defense is. And the fact that that secondary is banged up the way it is with Mills out and with Jonathan Jones suffering from a chest injury, Jack Jones still suffering with the knee, even if both of those guys are in there with Marcus Jones, 
still creates a little bit of a problem if these guys are less than 100%. So I think it's going to be a very tight game in Foxborough. I think the Patriots and Bengals give each other all they can handle. At the end right. of the day, I think the Bengals just have a little bit more firepower. I think they take this one by a final of 20 to 17. But again, folks, I will absolutely be more than happy to come back here on Monday on Lockdown Patriots and admit that I was wrong. I sincerely hope that I am. <laughs> I, I I do too. Um, you know, you you might think it's a bit a bit of uh, festivus uh, wishful thinking here, mm -hmm. but um, I think I think we can we can dance around the pole on Monday if the Patriots sit back and and turn each and every key. They're going to have to turn each and every key. Folks, go over to e2gsports.com tomorrow morning and check those out. Absolutely. Beyond belief, folks, anytime the keys are published, once they hit the press, you definitely want to be able to check those out because, again, it will give you more insight than you can possibly imagine. And we hope that we've been able to give you a good accompaniment, a good amount of insight as to what the Patriots and the Bengals game is going to look like this Saturday. If you're heading up to Gillette, going to be a very cold day, according to the forecast. Uh, temperatures yep. expected to be in the 20s, which means you're going to probably going to get a feel like up in Foxborough in the teens. Uh, bundle up, stay warm, stay safe, and stay well. It's definitely not the time of year that you do want to be sick. Uh, no matter what holiday you're celebrating this weekend or no matter what you're celebrating this weekend, never miss an opportunity to tell those around you how much they mean to you, those you that's love, it. those that are close to you. That's the most important thing about the holiday season is really spending time and being able to appreciate those that mean the most to you. So from the bottom of my heart here on Locked On Patriots, I wish you all a very happy, safe, healthy holiday. I know I speak for my good friend when he wishes you the same. Murph. I appreciate you. Happy holidays to you, my friend, because uh, you, you are buddy. one of the great ones, uh, not just in thank this business, you. but in all walks of life. Uh, you're a great friend and a great man. And thank you for always being there for the handoff whenever I need you. Always, always humbled uh, by, by your praise, but I, I don't know if I deserve it all. Uh, and, and right back at you. you. You're one of the best people that I know in this business. One of the most knowledgeable people that I know in this business. Thank you. Um, and one of the, one of the things that you don't know folks about Mike is, is the fact that um, I like to tell parents of the, the kids that I coach that I've been doing this for, for 35 years, but there isn't a day that I don't walk onto a ball field and learn something from either another coach, an umpire or a player um, that, that plays for me or plays for somebody else. And Mike, Mike has that same, uh, mentality when he goes to work every day. Uh, he, he's, he's never, um, he's forever humble. He always knows that he can learn something from somebody else. And that's a mark of greatness. Well, thank you, my friend. It really does mean a lot to me. I do appreciate that. And uh, I'm uh, not sure how worthy I am of that praise, but uh, yeah, I will are. continue sure. continue uh, to work my best to make sure that we are giving you here on Locked On Patriots the daily dose of New England Patriots coverage that you want, that you need, that you crave. Please, by all means, reach out to us at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. If you want to reach out to me directly or you can leave a comment in the YouTube section or you can also reach out to us on Twitter at L-O underscore Patriots. But in the meantime, folks, please, once again, happy holidays. And because you've made Locked On Patriots your first listen today, make your second listen our good friends over at Locked On Sports Today. All the news you need and all the major sports, including the take of the day, you just can't ask for better than that. Locked On Sports Today is available wherever you get your podcasts, whether that be through the Odyssey app, YouTube, or any other podcast provider. Download, subscribe to, follow. On behalf of the legendary Count of Murphy Fisto himself, my good friend Thomas Murphy, I'm Mike DeBate. Stay safe, stay well, be the change you wish to see in the world. Happy holidays, everyone, and enjoy the game on Saturday. Festivus for the rest of us. <laughs>